Okay, now people, I've actually decided I'm going to go live and, and I've realized that the internet here is kind of slowed down. Do you all have that? Oh, don't tell me you're not on the internet. You're busy gmailing and twittering and facebooking and doing all of that. <coughs> Okay, so I'm going to sort of take us, try to take us to live streams to, to, to just give you a little glim, glimpse about how we can use certain of these social media tools that Mike and them has been talking about in our classrooms. Um, and this is our tw uh, tweet, Twitter stream. Please, those of you that got your cell phones out, take them out. Get onto Twitter. I want you to talk while I'm talking, okay? You're going to be really busy. Um, the hashtag for the conference is hash iWeek 2011. If you want to um, engage with the presenters at a later time or with me, you can ask questions there. Please get it going. I've invited my personal learning network to come and join me here today to c deal with the question of how can the internet change education? All the speakers this, uh, during this conference will ask that question, how can the internet change society? And I'm going to be representing how it can change education. Can you go back to my presentation, please? This is kind of scary because we've got to, and I don't have a clicker. Yes, my clicker. Okay, now I've just got to see where I can click. Right. Um, uh, ICT for Champions, by the way, people, is a movement. It's not an NGO. It's a movement like a bowel movement. You have to go when you have to go. So I want to have ICT champions out there going. That is my whole aim. Right. So the first thing that I want to do is to introduce you to our super teachers. Um, they are from the COSA Care Project. Please, super teachers, stand up quickly that they can see you. There's their hands in the air. Woo, 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 woo. Right. Um, and I also want you, I, I, I told you that we are going to bring in the live element. We talk about to using technology in our classrooms. But when we go to conferences, we stick to our PowerPoints um, because we are scared that the internet is going to let us down. And in this country, it happens more than it doesn't. So let's go. Um, I want you to go and vote. Can the internet really change education? And there is the link, okay? There's the link. And can somebody please Twitter the link? So if you go to Twitter and you search for iWeek 2011, you can just click on the link and go and vote. Or if you don't want to do it on Facebook, you can do it on Twitter, okay? Um, or you can go and leave a message if you want to say something. You don't just want to do yes or no kind of a poll situation. Go to my blog at www.school2.coza. Or you can leave a message at todaysmeet.com, which is a kind of a quick room. You don't have to register. You don't have to do anything. Fantastic tool to use in the classroom because you can get your students in there quickly, ask them questions, let get them into discussions. And you can have a screen up. Normally, I have a screen up in the classroom where they can see what, what their, their fellow pupils are saying. Um, and please, if you're really desperate, you can go and leave a voice message or SMS on my cell phone number, and I forgot to put it in there. I will Twitter it, okay? Or if all else fails, send me a smoke signal. All right. So let's start. Teacher one. Um, and by the way, I actually, Jenny said to me, I'm not allowed to, fla to, to throw my bra this time because that's what I normally do. But I decided... Um, at this point in time, I'm not going to get the chance to be in front of a bunch of geeks, so I'm going to flash you. How's that? Is that okay? Right. Here we go. What was the score? Ah, 87? What? Zero. Okay, people, did you enjoy that flash? <laughs> okay. Right. Teacher one. Let's not get distracted. Teacher one. And I will strip if it means that I can get from teacher one to teacher 3.1. Then I will definitely strip. Right, teacher one is writing on a blackboard. Now, I want you to ask our super teachers, do you still write on blackboards? What do you write on? 
Ah, we are go moving on to overbred projectors. Now, what is happening out there, and the research backed this up as well, is that we've replaced blackboards with whiteboards, and if we're really fancy, we've got interactive whiteboards that we can do exactly the same thing that we've been doing for the last don't know how many years, in, just in a more exciting and colorful and interactive way. But we're still doing the same thing. Right, so let's look at what Teacher One looks like. And our teachers here will confirm if this is them. They've got their curriculum documents. They've got their colleagues around them that they can ask. They have got popular media like um, uh, Mindset, Learn. There's fantastic stuff on there. And they've got their family and their local community. As well, they have got print and digital media. Now, when we're looking at digital media, um, our teacher's idea of integrating ICT in our classrooms is when we ask our students to go and find information on a specific topic. And our kids go out there, they are fantastic, they can Google anything, and then they cut and paste it and give it back to us, and then we get really angry at them because they are plagiarizing. Okay? So, that is our teacher one kind of a situation, and that's our typical teacher one network. Right, so, and I'm not going to go into this, but being a consultant have got its advantages in that um, I don't, I'm not affiliated with the government or anything like that, so the teachers talk to me, and this is the, some of their concern. They feel they have got no voice, they're isolated, there's little support, there's gaps in their subject knowledge, people. Um, I'm a math teacher, math literacy. There's gaps in our subject knowledge. Um, there's limited local resources. There's no or limited ICT infrastructures. There's labs there that are locked up. Fiona was telling me that she got to a school where the computer lab had a sign that said, what did the sign say, Fiona? Do not touch these computers. All right. So there is some serious issues here that we cannot ignore and that we have got to deal with. So that's why I'm here to just take you back out of this geek world and bring you back into re reality. Right, where we want to get to is teachers too. This photograph was taken at the MISO conference where we actually engaged the teachers. Um, they had to use their cell phones to answer questions, give us some opinions. And you can see there were some um, uh, onlookers. There's Prof. Adler and Prof. Geti Satati. Um, and they loved it. They absolutely loved it. They were quite amazed that they could do this with their cell phones. So that brings me to... Teachers to connected network. This is where we have to get our teachers to. And if we look, we'll see that about a third of the circle, and this circle is ever expanding, getting bigger, getting more stuff into it. It's about a third of what is familiar with us. So I'm going to quickly run. I'm an educational technologist, so I'm going to quickly look at some of these tools to see how we can use it in the classroom. Obviously, blogs. Blogs is a personal journal. I would like our super teachers to write a blog post about the amazing projects that they have done. I want to give them a voice. I want to hear their stories. A blog is a quick and easy way that we can actually garner all that amazing things that they are busy doing. Not just the bad news about education. We want some good stories from the classroom, from the grassroots. A blog can do that. Wikis, collaborative. We can do a project where the kids can work together. Um, they can even use Google Doc where they can edit documents at the same time even. They can have discussions on the documents. Brilliant. Then video conferencing. I would love, Roger, Roger, are you concentrating? Roger, I would love to get Roger to come and talk to my math literacy teachers on those amazing real life math in what he is busy doing via a, a video conference. Those amazing, did you see those graphs? They were to die for. Trend lines, fantastic. If, they, if he can actually, if I can get him on Skype, come and talk to my teachers in their classroom, we can do that for our students as well. Chat, our kids are always busy chatting. If we're there with them, they can quickly ask us a question before it becomes a problem and a phobia that they can't deal with math. Yuck! Right, social networking. Um, Mike has basically covered that, but as far as it's concerning um, education, we need 
communities of practice. Social media give that to us. We can talk to one another, we can share resources, we can collaborate, and we do not have to feel so isolated anymore. Right, and then obviously the, the online communities, uh, I just want to say uh, the strategic plan for teachers' professional development, communities of practice, they now are calling PLCs, professional learning communities, are written into the strategic, strategic plan for teachers, which is heartening, but online would be fantastic because we can connect with all the teachers across the country. Right, photo sharing. Um, photo sharing, people, is, that is my common thread that I find my teachers love. It is fantastic to actually get a glimpse of what's happening in the classroom. Take that out. Show the people, this is what my students are doing. Connect that, that, that amazing visual thing of what is happening in my classroom. And then, last but not least, Twitter. Now, for the last five years, as teachers vote on our favorite teaching and learning tool. And for the last, and it, it's been in operation for five years, um, the voting is ending in November, and for the last five years, Twitter has been the top tool for learning and teaching. Are you excited about that? Are you Twittering? So no longer is Twitter a, a, a tool that we can use to um, ask people or tell people what I'm having for breakfast. We educators use it to engage our students in the classroom. If they've got to answer and summarize what we are saying while we're in the classroom with Twitter, they're not going to have time to mix it to one another. They will have to, to think. It's a higher order thinking school, tool if we can use it in our, in our classroom. To summarize what somebody's saying in 140 characters or less Take some higher order thinking skills. Try it, please. Twitter um, the, the speakers that's coming up and see how it actually focuses you on what they are saying because you've got to make it your own before you can put it in 140 characters. Right. And the reason why we have to be Teachers 2 or Teachers 3.1 uh, is for this little guy. And. I just want to give you something that um, Laura Butcherite has written. She is the mother of Dr. Mass on Mixit. Um, all our kids have grown up with this. We have to change the way we're teaching. If we're going to be teaching the old style, then they are going to be bored and they are, we are going to have discipline problems. Do I have to read that? Oh! This is the other reason. This is our little baby that's grown up a little bit. And you can see she is multitasking like crazy. She's on everything at the same time. And this is my big concern, and I'm really glad that we've had that, that cyber insight a little bit earlier, is our kids are out there. They are using these tools. So what is happening is either we ban it completely, Okay, you're not going to go on Facebook. Do you, and uh, your experience, have you found that your kids have listened to you? Huh? No, I don't think so. Um, take their cell phone away, they just get another one. They have got two or three SIM cards stuck in their purse. So, we also need to talk to them about their digital footprint. When they leave school, and this is what we're preparing our children for, when they leave school, they've got to be prepared for the workplace out there. What kind of digital footprint have they left behind? Will I employ them if I look at their digital footprint? And privacy. We need to educate on privacy, people. The, the weak link is the user, and our children, we need to prepare them for taking care of their privacy online. So, I thought we will play Monopoly. The ones that is younger than 40 will know what Monopoly is. Everybody knows what Monopoly is? Uh, come on, guys, hands up. I'm sure there's more of you that knows what Monopoly is. Okay, so literally, our game, our aim of this game is to create problem solvers, lifelong learners, 20th century innovators. We are preparing our children for jobs that do not exist yet. So these to me, and this is my personal view that I have got for education, um, is we've got, they've got to be able to solve problems. Right, so we need to get them over there. Are you ready? So this is the landscape, that's the background. 
So the first thing that happens is, or, and I'm now talking up to what has been happening in our country, just to give you a little glimpse, is we've created computer labs. It was first the, the Tantana schools, um, there's various other, sp other projects. Uh, Coza Care also creates um, uh, school labs. So we've created a lab, we put in software, which already is a problem. Should we go open source? Should we go Microsoft? Um, <laughs> that whole problem, what should we install on there? Um, the, uh, the hardware and the tools, people, that's all stuck in the computer lab, okay? Then, the next part of my Monopoly game is basic computer training, okay? Now, at, the problem is, at this point in time, except for a few projects that's actually taking a little bit further, um, basic computer uh, training means how to type, um, how to navigate, um, using Word um, and spreadsheet, well, I would rather say a word processor, because we could use Writer as well, um, to, to do basic documents. And basically, <sighs> I get really desperate if people ask me to do that because what happens is like this, and I'm going to do a demonstration. This is my training, okay, right? Lots of money going into this training. Here we go. And I get sent out into the, oh, we're going to save the teachers desert, okay? And then I do this. in the desert, and please don't leave your stuff behind in the desert. Okay, so it's out there, and then I come back in a month's time, or the project money runs out, and I'm totally surprised that no flowers has blossomed there. Now, people, it's going to take quite a lot more of this ongoingly before we're going to get somewhere. Okay, and a lot more investment. So this is kind of scary. Should I go on? No. Where's my clicker? Right. And then, ah, internet access. Do we have internet access? Now, I can tell you that I've even got to some very resource school, and we get a whole class of teachers in there or learners in there, and the internet just trickles down to a tiny little, shall I do another little stream, tiny little stream, and we cannot engage in all those wonderful social media tools that we were talking about. So the, the, basically, the internet access has been definitely, if we're talking about teacher two, it's not been there for us. So. Are you hearing this? And I think you know this. Right, then we get exciting. We're now leveling out. We're getting to the ICT integration part. Now we want to take all these wonderful tools and we want to integrate it. At this point, integration means that we can take our school marks and put it in the Excel spreadsheet. We can do reports. Um, we can do posters, we can do all the basic things that we need in our classroom. But if we look at the background, have we, at this point, created problem-solving, lifelong learners, 21 century innovators? No, don't think so. Right, and then we get to the next absolutely heartbreaking point, and that is subject content training. I hope you're all aware that next year we are implementing a new variation of our curriculum documents. Are you all aware of that? It's called the CAPS documents. And as we speak, they're busy rolling out training for the teachers. Now, we've got to teach that next year, and we're busy training now. Um, short training, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how and what depth it's going to happen. Okay, so... We've got to take all of this now into our classrooms. We've got to make it classroom practice. All this ICT, all this knowledge and skills, we've got to come and do that in our classrooms. So the upside, can you see I'm going up the little monopoly board over here? We, we, want, to, we want to actually move in an upward direction. Social media tools, I don't have to tell you the power that social media tools have for education. Um, and I know uh, that uh, lots of people yell at me that, is it really free? 
For us teachers that do not have money, it is free, it's easy to use, and we can do really, really exciting things where we can get our kids to think and solve problems and work collaborative, collaboratively, and we can work with our colleagues collaboratively. Social media tools do have that potential. Right, and then where I want to get to is to take all of this and use it in a contextual way. Not, let's learn word for the sake of learning word. Let's see how the ICT that I've got and the skills that I've learned can be used contextually in my classroom for the background reason. I want problem solvers, lifelong learners, 21st century innovators. But the good news is that I can pass jail completely by creating a highway. Okay? And the highway has got to involve that the teachers should have internet access. And in my personal experience, I find that you can, you can take resources to the teachers and you'll go back and you'll find that the disk of resources is still lying there in the drawer. We need to actually start on a personal level. Get out those cell phones, unban them in the schools, let the kids put them on their tables where they can interact with us as teachers. And if we can learn how to use Facebook to keep in contact with our friends um, and our children, brilliant. If we start using these tools on a personal level, then once we've got some familiarity with it, we will take it into our classrooms. So I'm asking, let's encourage teachers and let's give them things where they can start on a personal level. The next part of my highway is um, we've got to bring in all the tools and all the support ongoingly, not just a little bit of water here, a little bit of water there. We've got to be them, there for them at all times. We've got to be there for one another. If we are a community of practice and we're stuck with something little and I just ask my Twitter network, quickly, please, just help me with this question, they will be there for you, always. Um, I have never found people not coming back to me if I've asked for a question. I once left my keys in Cape Town in the rental car, got to Joburg and realized, ah, Twittered, who's coming from Cape Town? And two hours later, I had my keys. So little things, personal things, if we experience the power of ICT on a personal level, we will take it into our classrooms. Um, I also, I don't think I've mentioned it yet, but it's not about the tools. It is about the context that we live in. We, we sort of get carried away with the tool, and I know that you know, I make a big deal out of Twitter, but at the end of the day, it's about whether this particular tool that we are using are able to create um, problem solvers, lifelong learners, 21st century innovators. So, my answer to world peace is that we have to create connected personal learning communities. Now, that's now the official word in education at the moment for communities of practice, PLCs, professional learning communities. I actually don't quite like the word professional because I feel that comes standard with our jobs. I want to change that to personal learning communities because if I, as a teacher, can carry on learning, my children are going to be amazing lifelong learners. Now, I'm not going to tie you up today. I just look at all these bottles and we've broken some glasses already this morning and I know the Mac guys will absolutely hate me if we crack the, 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 the Macs. So I've decided I'm not going to tie you up today. But just take a piece of string and pull on it. And those, that is what we need. We need to build a network of connections between our teachers, between um, interested parties, bet between the, uh, the organizations that are working in isolation, we all need to pull together. The teachers need to put their hands up. Teachers, put your hands up. There we go, the teachers. Is there anybody else that wants to work with us? Put your hands up now. 
there we go. I can see there's a few of you that sort of, oh, I'm not going to work with the teachers. Hey, what's wrong with you? So we've got to stop moaning about the state that the education is in, and we've got to take responsibility on a personal level if we want to change education in this country today. I've made this my personal motto. Um, I store my knowledge in my friends. If my friends know it, they can teach it to me. I can learn it from them, and I can do the same for them. So a little bit of TLC, Tender Loving Care, and I know you geeks love all the acronyms, can create an amazing PLC, personal learning um, community. And TLC for me stands for Teachers Learning and collab oh, what's that word? Collaboration. So, please, please, I need to be connected. Okay? So, how can we take this discussion further? How much time do I still have? Right, move over to our Twitter, uh, Twitter stream. Let's see, I hope it's here. Okay. Let's go see what's happening. Now, normally, this is a, a, this is a, a, a Twitter fall um, where people will be talking, and we can see this is Orange Twit, which is incognito at the conference. Um, Fiona, I store my knowledge in my friend. So literally, what I do at the end of a lesson is I create a tweet doc of the whole day's uh, tweets, and, uh, well, you get the, the children to do that because they're very good with technology. We need to learn from them. Um, and we've got a whole transcript of what was happening in the lesson. We even have a tool where we can put in um, a certain time date, and it will tell us who, exactly who participated and how much they participated. So if we do that in the classroom, as part of, uh, uh, we, we love, teachers love to assess. So... We can see exactly, we can say to them, listen, you've got to have at least 5% participation. And the peer pressure of seeing their comments and their discussions showing up creates a huge big buzz. And I see Laurie has said hello to us. Hello, everybody. I'm in my office watching this. Hi, Laurie. That's Dr. Mass on Mixit. Please get your kids on that. If they struggle with their homework, they can mix it to uh, Laurie's mentors, and they can handle about, I think each mentor handles about 30 students. It is an amazing project, had about 30,000 learners um, making use of the project already. Right, so this is fantastic because we can bring voices in from outside to come and talk with us. And um, my blog, this uh, presentation is already on my blog, and I've actually sort of just looked at, um, if I ask this question, how can the internet change education, then we need to, each of us, go back to the concept of what we believe education is. Um, so I've done a little reflection over there with links where you can carry on. I'm going to leave it open for about a week. Um, and you can use whatever channel you want. You can go and uh, do it on Facebook. You can do it on Twitter. You can leave a comment in the blog. So can you also see all these social networks? Mike was talking about that we need a social um, operating system. We don't need to worry about that so much because we need to engage with our teachers on the platform that they're going to feel comfortable with. And we can pull all of that together. So let's go where they feel comfortable, the tool that they feel comfortable with, whether it's Facebook or Twitter, um, any one of those are great. And let's just go see how the voting has been going on um, on Twitter. Aish, I'm so happy. I'm going to put little, two little eyes and a smile on that face. At this point in time, we've only had 11 votes, though. Pathetic. Get with the program. And I first want you to read the reflection um, on my blog about education because I say there that I've taught maths for 20 years um, very successfully. I've never had a student fail on me ever. And, and during that time, I never used the internet. So do we need the internet to actually teach well? So please go think about before you vote. It's not just such a simple question as what it looks like. Right. Um, I want to show you today's meet. 
Um, so basically, if you're on your computers now and you are connected, I want you to quickly go. And question time, we're going to conduct via uh, today's meet as well. So if you want to ask me a question, please go to today's meet forward slash iWeek 2011. Very easy. Very powerful tool to use even in business. It's a, it's a little room. You can make it open. You can make it closed. People don't need to register. So there's no hassles about registration, all that kind of thing. They can just go in and start talking. And then at the end of it, you can also make a transcript, which you can post to Facebook or Twitter, um, wherever to the teacher's portfolio. <coughs> So please go and talk over there. This is just some of the tools in action. And obviously, Facebook. Um, three weeks ago, I was at a school in Soweto, and all the teachers that were there, and it actually I were already on Facebook, and they were Facebooking from their cell phones. So um, you can use the Facebook channel. I have actually moved my Learn With Maggie over to Facebook now, and I'm going to be running a Twitter un-workshop starting the beginning of October. And you can sneak in, if you want to, um, and come and join us to take the teachers through the basic step of how they can powerfully use Twitter in their classrooms. So you're welcome to come and, even if you just come and look and see what we're up to, um, and that you'll get www.ict for champions. Right, um, can I go back to my PowerPoint, please, just to conclude? Right, so to finish off, <coughs> I'm Maggie V on Twitter. If you like social media, mathematics, math education, educational technology, then please, you are welcome to follow me. And of course, also, if you like the blue balls in the spring box, you can, you can follow me. Um, if you are a teacher or you want to talk to South African teachers, please use the hashtag SA Teachers. So if you search in Twitter for SA Teachers, you will be talking to teachers or South African teachers' issues. Um, obviously, the hashtag for this conference is iWeek2011, and I would hope, we haven't been getting into Twitter a lot, there's a handful of us that's been Twittering the conference, but the people out there actually watch what's happening. Yesterday, I followed the e-learning conference in Cape Town in detail. So, and the detail depends on how we actually use the tool. And if you want to follow these amazing teachers from the uh, Koza Care, Care project and how their growth through the monopoly system is going, then you, you just go and search for superteachers.com. And I want you now to take out your cell phones and take a photograph of my QR code, which will take you to all of this. Yeah.